My name is John McGeehan and I'm a Professor of Structural Biology at the University of Portsmouth in the UK. I'm also Director of the Centre for Enzyme Innovation, where we have a team of about 30 research scientists engaged in really finding solutions to our plastic pollution problem. Estimates are that by 2050, we'll be using 20% of our fossil resources, that's oil and gas, towards making new plastic. And that's, that cannot happen. We cannot allow this to happen because we can actually recycle the plastic that's already up on the surface here. We just need to find better solutions. We're looking to nature to try and learn from it because nature has this incredible capacity to turn over carbon and waste. In fact, nothing is wasted in nature. Everything is reused. You only have to look at mangroves and rainforests and see the incredible diversity of materials there that are continually reused in this endless cycle. So we can learn from this. Um, humans, in terms of plastic pollution, have essentially broken this cycle because we're using things once and throwing it away. And then that material is ending up in landfills, it's ending up in incineration, and eventually it's leaking to the environment through rivers and into our oceans. And in fact, there's very few areas in the world now that are free from plastic. Plastic is all around us, in land, in the ocean, and even in the food we eat and the air we breathe. So we're really reached crisis point here. In nature, green plant leaves are covered by a waxy coating called cutin, and this is nature's polyester. It's a protective coating that the plant uses uh, as a waterproofing and sort of uh, a defense against microorganisms. But those microorganisms over millions of years have developed enzymes to eat through that, that, that polyester coating. And that polyester is held together by the same bonds that hold PET plastic together. So you can see where we can actually learn from nature and transfer that over to the laboratory. So currently our research is focusing on a plastic called PET, polyethylene terephthalate. And this is commonly used in single drinks uh, bottles, uh, fizzy drinks and, and water bottles, um, but also in lots of different packaging applications. And then you'll find it in textiles, anything that says polyester on the label is, is, is basically PET, um, and also in things like carpet. And as you go down this chain, the value of this material gets lower and lower. And, and when it gets down to textiles and carpets, it's very poorly recycled at the moment. But it's a very valuable material. You know, we spent a lot of energy digging it out of the ground. We made a lot of greenhouse gas emissions by doing that. So we need to take care of this material and make sure we can recycle it more circularly. Basically, the idea would be to collect that plastic, um, pull it together in a big vat, pour in that sort of engineered powdered enzyme, and then over hours and days, that plastic would start to basically break down into a clear solution, which we then can pull out the building blocks. And those building blocks are as good as the ones from oil and gas. One question that people always ask me was, how much does it cost? You know, it's a really interesting technology, but how, how do we sell this to industry? So as part of our collaboration with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in the US, um, we were able to bring together a, a team of economists who can really look at this and answer that question. So we did a study which is now published in open access in, in the journal Jewel, which shows that if you compare making plastic from fossil resources compared to using enzymes to recycle it, at scale the cost is pretty much on a par. And this is really exciting because not only is the cost comparable, but the energy savings across the supply chain are huge, about 80% and the greenhouse gas emissions are also reduced by up to 40%. And of course, this is incredibly important when the scale of plastic is set to grow. Plastic pollution is a global phenomenon and we need a global solution. One of the things I think COP26 can do is bring people together for common action. So in our field, we really want to bring scientists, engineers, and not just research scientists, but also industrial scientists, those people that know at the front line how to make these processes, the chemical engineers of the world, the economists, um, and the people that really understand business and how to make these things economically viable. But then we need incentives. We need governments to help us and push this technology, get it out there and get it used. We're not going to turn off plastic straight away. So we need to find a, a way of reducing our plastic, but also dealing with the plastic that we've got. And if we can take the key plastics that are actually useful and then keep them in a, a recycle, a circular recycling loop, I think we can really do a great job for the planet. We desperately need to reduce our carbon footprint, reduce the greenhouse gas emissions that are going out into the environment 
and, and really tackle climate change head on. We don't have much time to do this and I'm hoping, I'm pinning all my hopes on the fact that COP26 can really push this forward.